good morning one and all today we will learn some of the commands from data manipulation language now data manipulation language is an sql command used to manipulate the data we have seen ddl data definition language which is used to create and man manage the structures of the database whereas dml deals with the data contents of the tables so when i talk about this this particular dml commands can be used to access the data in various forms like inserting data into the table updating the table data deleting rows or data from the table or otherwise data extraction from the table now select is one of those important commands in dml which can also be termed as data query language which is used to retrieve the data from the database so when i say dql data query language these are the statements used for performing the queries on the data within the schema object the purpose is to get the schema relation based on the query passed to it so basically on the whole select is used to retrieve the data from the database and insert update and deletes are used for inserting modifying and deleting the data from the table coming to the insert we have already created the structures tables using our create command which are capable of holding the data now i need to load that table with the data which can be done using the insert command insert is used to insert the data add the data rows that is records to your data table now there are various formats of insert now insert to all the columns of the table or insert to selected columns of the table or we can insert multiple rows at a time or we can also insert data from an existing table the table need not be the same table but the data columns what i am populating onto this table should be compatible with what i already have here so let us see the examples the first one is insert only values that is when i want to insert data into each and every column of the table i just need to specify the values now look at this when i see this basically how to remember this command insert is the keyword which tells me that i am performing an insert operation where am i inserting i am inserting into a table so already i have given a table name in my structure when i was creating table i have said create table table name now i will be just using that table name here so insert into that table name the values what are the set of values so these are going to be the values which corresponds to those columns which we have created using our table command remember there should be a one to one mapping of the data types because in say for example student table i have created with certain fields like sid which is integer and s name which is going to be character then the two values what i am giving must be first one should be integer second one must be character and wherever characters or date data types are inserted please enclose them within single quotes so enclose the character and the date data type using the single quotes one more thing to remember the default format of date when you are inserting would be the four digit year hyphen two digit month hyphen two digit date this is going to be the default format for date remember date and character should be enclosed in single quotes and the regular values integer any numeric values are directly given so when you are giving only values one to one correspondence and all the columns the number of columns in the table and the number of values you have given here should match coming to the next one now here i am writing column names and the values i may have 10 columns in my table but i am interested in entering values 
only for four columns of that table. Right now I have the value like that, maybe remaining values I wanted to update at a stretch or when I get I want to write it something or the other. Or sometimes it will so happen that you have a sheet from which you are entering the data and the columns there and the columns in your table does not uh, match or otherwise the order is not same. So, in such situation also I may go by column name format so that I can reorder the columns. But here remember the syntax before the values I am expected to write all the names of the column. So, insert into table name I will specify the columns into which I am going to enter the value now. So, columns then I have these values. So, remember before I enter the values I should use the keyword values. So, look at the example insert into student I am only entering SID, S name and GPA. In your previous thing I also had the branch. Now, I am not giving the branch SID, S name and GPA values are these the three. Remember so, column names and values will give you a flexibility to enter the values to only the selected columns or reorders the columns of the table while inserting the data. The third option is if I want to insert multiple rows at a time. Remember in your single insert statement insert into table name values one set of values are enclosed in the bracket when you want to continue delimiter is comma just separated by comma you give the next set of values. Now, with this you will be able to insert multiple rows at a time. The syntax remains the same after values each set of values that is each record or each row is enclosed in brackets. So, this way this is going to insert one row, second row and the third row. So, like this I can insert multiple rows at a time. Coming to another syntax, many a times I have a table which is already existing say for example, the supplier table may populate the data into my customer table. The suppliers there become my customers. If that is the case I may just have to take the data from one table and insert it into another. In such situation what is going to happen? I am just going to say you insert into table, you select the values from another table. So, this is select is actually to retrieve the data. So, I am saying you retrieve the data from another table and insert into this table. There can be optionally a condition also because say sometimes I want student names to be populated into another table where the student belong to a particular department may be only CSC department, only CSM or IT. Okay, when I say this I can put a where condition. So, remember it is insert into table here when I said star all the columns from the second table will be inserted into this. When I say particularly columns I am selecting few columns, I am selecting data to only few of the columns of my table by selecting few columns from another table look at this. If that is the case instead of star you will specify the column names here. Let me just show an example here. See it is insert into customer is my table into which I want to put the data and there I am selecting only three columns. My customer table may have many columns, but out of it for these three columns I am inserting the data from where I am selecting it from suppliers table, the suppliers table which columns the supplier name, city and the country. Remember the column names need not be same, but the data types of the columns must be compatible with the inserting column. So, remember here customer table has these three rows, I am selecting these three rows and inserting into this. So, after this whole operation if you say select star from customer you are going to see six different rows, three rows which was there in the customer and these three rows from 
uh, supplier has been added to that by selecting only supplier name, city and country, other fields I did not copy. So, this is another way of inserting. So, inserting data is nothing but adding rows or that is records to your table. Coming to delete, like your insert, you can also need to delete sometimes assume that the student detained, I do not want his database in the second year thing or maybe he took a TC because of transfer, I do not want that that record to be in the student database of the college or otherwise I may have to restigate a student due to certain disciplinary issues. Whatever may be the case, I am deleting a record from a table. How do I delete it? As I said, from a table. Just remember the syntax, it is delete from table name. Then I put a where condition because deletion is subject to constraints. That is which particular record am I deleting? Which student's data I am deleting? Which customer's data I am deleting? Is it based on or otherwise is it that I am deleting a particular branch data or a particular location data? Based on that I may have conditions. So, look at this delete from here delete from student this is the table name where branch equal to CSM. So, here all the records from the student table where in the branch column I have the value as CSM will be deleted not the other CSE, IT, CSD student data will be as it is only CSM data will be deleted. Look at this statement delete from student that is it. I did not put any condition in such case all the data in that table would be deleted. So, this is equivalent to the truncate command in DDL. Truncate was actually deleting all the data, but the structure was retained. So, this truncate is equivalent to delete from student that is conditionless, all the data would be deleted. <coughs> so, this is delete from customer where customer name is Alfred Futterkert. Yeah, in this particular case, if you see in our first example, you have this particular row, okay, whereas when I say delete from and after that I check, I do not have that particular record with customer ID 1, okay, that is what is delete is going to do, selective delete. <coughs> Next is update. When I have the data already in my table, I want certain modifications. Say for example, your phone number got changed or your address got changed or you applied for revaluation, your CGPA would increase all such situations I want to modify the data which is in the table that is what is update. Existing records can be modified or updated. How is this? Again look at the syntax almost SQL is simple English like language. What am I saying? I want to update this table and set the value of this particular column to this new value. Update table name set column 1 equal to value 1, column 2 equal to value 2. So, set the values of these columns where I can give a condition because I want to change the phone number of a student whose roll number is so and so. Update customer set city equal to US where customer ID equal to 4. So, in your customer table customer ID 4 I am changing the city from London to say US, something like this anyway, does not match actually with that. Okay. Now, update EMP set bonus equal to 5000. Look at these two things difference. Here it is conditional, it will select, it will search for the rows where customer ID is 4, whereas in this case it will set all the bonus column to 5000 regardless of whichever branch they belong to bonus equal to 5000 in the employee table, I am setting the bonus equal to 5000 to all the employees. <coughs> now, select many a times people have confusion whether select is a query language or a uh, DML data manipulation language, nothing to worry 
it is a part of command which is dealing with the data. So, in select, in DML also you can mention about select. What is select? Select is basically used to retrieve the data from one or more table. So, what is the generalized syntax? I would say select list of columns. So, it is the columns which are existing in that table. So, I would specify the list of columns from which table? List of table. I may have one or more table I said. So, all those table names. If you have multiple tables here, here when you are saying column, you will say column name dot, I mean table name dot column name. So, that it can identify from which table which column has to be retrieved. Then there is a condition where remember select and from are must where group by all these are optional. So, where list of rows which match the condition. I just have to specify the condition so that those rows which match that condition will be extracted. Then group by it is used to group similar data together in order to apply certain functions on that. Then there is a having clause where when you are applying condition or aggregate functions on group of data, it should match certain conditions and order by is sorting. Let us try to see. So, this is the generalized picture of how select works. So, here it is going to be the uh, columns which are selected from the tables. Then restriction on where condition if you have, is there any group by option if that is there, you sort them by group late department wise when I say all CSM data together, all IT data, all CSC data. Then apply the aggregate functions. Check do you have any restriction based on having condition if that is so extract only that data. <coughs> Check if order by is given. If that is the case you need to arrange the retrieved data in sorted order. If it is not there you can directly project them. Okay? So, this is how general select works. So, some sample examples I have just given. Select star from table name. Just said select star from employee all the records from employee table will be displayed. No condition, nothing. No restriction on column names also. I can put restriction on column names. See select employee ID name from employee. Only two columns will be displayed or I may have where condition. Now, this is application of constraints on the rows. So, I said select EID E name from employee where EID is 101. So, only that employee's data or only that row where EID is 101 will be displayed for you. You want to see the data from all the CSE department staff, then here I would just say department equal to CSE. So, based on the columns that are there in the specified table, I can have a restriction on the value and only those rows which match this particular condition or the constraint will be extracted and displayed. Okay. Thank you so much. We will see more operators and how to form where conditions in our next class. Remember, these are going to be the part of your lab exercises. DML commands can be applied onto any of the table that you have created and inserting data, updating or extracting data from them. Thank you so much.